Welcome to episode 27 of Greeting Mashiach. Today we're asking the question that's on everyone's minds. Is the Rebbe Mashiach? Short answer, yes, 100%. Now let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So, um, um, yeah, we'll start. We'll start with the... With the... Basic thing, like how, like, you know, tell us about it. <laughs> what do you mean when you say that the Rebbe is Mashiach, what does that mean? What is, you know, there's different, there's different um, explanation, uh, understanding of Mashiach, different Mashiach, Mashiach when Yosef, Mashiach when David, Mashiach Shabbatayr, Mecheskas Mashiach, Mashiach Mashiach Vadai, Melech Mashiach. like what, what are you talking about when you say is the Rebbe Mashiach, you know, like, uh, before we answer the question, is the Rebbe Mashiach, what does it mean, Mashiach? What does it mean, Rebbe, and what does it mean is? So, what is Mashiach? Well, it's actually a lot more simple than it sounds on a basic level. Mashiach is, is a king. He is going to be a physical person. He will be a descendant of Davra Melech, Shlema Melech. He will be proficient in Taira Mitzvahs. He will uh, do Taira Mitzvahs like his father David. He needs to be from Shevet Yehuda, obviously. He is going to be a Jewish leader. He's not going to be a full-on actual king, but he's yet he's going to be a Jewish leader who is uh, going to rally together the Jewish people. He's going to compel them all, to force them to keep Taira Mitzvahs and to fix the breaches in Yiddishkeit. He's going to fight the wars of Hashem, which is a little bit vague, but whatever that means. And these are the, this is all describing what type of person is he. And it's basically just describing the character traits of a good Jewish king. Any good Jewish king is doing all of these things. Then we move on to what makes someone Mashiach, which by the way means anointed, because a king is, in Judaism, typically anointed. Um, means that he's the chosen one of Hashem. And the one that makes him unique, that he's going to be Mashiach, is that he's going to be successful in doing all these things. And not only will he be successful, he's actually going to rebuild the base of Mikdash. He's going to build or bring down from heaven. He's going to put on the doors, his different opinions, but he's going to arrange the building of the third base of Mikdash. And lastly, he will do what's called Kibbutz Goliath, that's Gu'ula, when he brings every single Jew to Eretz Yisrael. That's in very short, the job description. That is Moshiach. He's that person. The person is going to do, who fits that criteria, who's going to do those things. That's what we mean. Um, now, a person could fit the criteria and he didn't yet bring the Geula. He, he, he will be Moshiach, you know. He's already what's called the Chaskas Moshiach. He's presumed to be Moshiach. He has the qualifications. He just didn't finish the job yet. He wasn't yet successful, didn't yet rebuild the Bessie Mikdash, and didn't yet do the Gula, bring the Gula. He didn't yet bring all the Yidin to the soil, but he's still what's called a potential Mashiach. It's only if he fails or he's killed that Imam tells us that he's no longer, uh, he's no longer in the running. So more importantly, let's put that aside for a second. We're Chassidim of the Rebbe. And every word that Rebbe tells us is by us, uh, that's reality. What I've told you till now is the Rambam's description. That's the halachic parameters of how this works. But uh, if we're talking to Chassidim, the real question is, what did the Rebbe have to say about this? And the simplest uh, way to approach this is we know that Rebbe is the Nasi Adar. I think any Lubavitcher will agree that the Rebbe is the Nasi Adar. Okay, what does that mean? It means that the Rebbe is the Moshe Rabbeinu of our generation. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's see. What was Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu took care of of of, uh, of every single need of the Jewish people. Okay, you know the famous story with the sheep, that one sheep wandered, uh, wandered off, and Moshe followed after when Hashem said, just like you care for every little sheep, or all of its needs, you're going to be the one to care for my flock, for the Jewish people. And Moshe was the one that tended to every physical and spiritual need of the Jewish people. 
when they needed water, they went to Moshe. I said, Moshe, we need water. And Moshe spoke to Hashem and Moshe gave them water. They said, Moshe, we need food. Moshe gave them food. When they needed the Torah, Moshe gave them the Torah. Asar said, Dibris, Moshe gave it to them. They couldn't handle it straight from Hashem. Every single Jew, their entire connection to Hashem, both their physical things and their spiritual things, went through Moshe Rabbeinu. He connected them all to Hashem. He's the one who stood between them and Hashem and connected them all together. If you look at all the Jewish people as one big body, the Nasi Adar, the leader of the generation, the Moshe of the generation, he's the mind, he's the heart, he's what makes the whole thing function. And there's people who are all part of that body. And he's the master soul that connects all of the souls. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. And the Zohar tells us that Moshe's soul is passed down from generation to generation. And in every generation, there is somebody who has this soul. Now, throughout all of history, it wasn't always so apparent who that was. It was obviously somebody who was, you know, being the anchor, the Meshur Rabbeinu of the generation, but it wasn't so clear. It wasn't always so obvious. In the Chabad dynasty, it was a lot more obvious. It was clear. You could see how the Friedrich Rebbe was, was like the Rebbe explains in the famous Mimer of, um, of uh, Vata Tetzave, you could see clearly how the Friedrich Rebbe like Mordechai in his time, who Mordechai clearly was the leader of all the Jewish people, the Friedrich Rebbe was clearly, you see, in the Soviet Union, he was taking care of all the Jewish people. He was the one carrying all of their burdens to make it happen, to keep Yiddishkeit alive. He was fighting the battles. You could see it. He was, he was the leader. And it's the same thing with uh, the Rebbe in our generation, that he's the Nasi Adar. And this is something Nola Babacher will argue on, that the Rebbe is the Nasi Adar. The Rebbe often referred to almost consistently his father-in-law as being the Friedrich Rebbe as being the Nasi Adar, even after his passing, after and after his Estalkos. But as the Rebbe said on a number of occasions, and it's obvious to everyone, that the Rebbe is the leader of the movement. The Rebbe started Dorishvi. It's not the sixth one. It's the seventh one, whereas the Hemshech is a continuation of the sixth generation. But Lepoyal, in actuality, the Rebbe was the one who is the underground Nasi Adar. He's the leader of the generation. The Rebbe explains that the soul of Meshir Rabbeinu must always be in this world, in the physical body of the Nasi Adar. So it's in the Rebbe's body. The Rebbe is the Nasi Adar. This is something that nobody argues on within Chabad. Very nice. Now we know what's a, what's a Nasi Adar. And we know that the Rebbe is the Nasi Adar of, of this uh, Darishvi. So, so how does that work? For how long is the Rebbe the Nasi Adar? So we could look to the Rebbe's first mimer. The Rebbe's first mimer is Bosilagani. This he said on Yushvat Tafshin Yudalus. The Rebbe then accepted the leadership of the seventh generation of Chabad and said that not necessarily did he ask for it, not necessarily did he want it, but this was our job, and he defined it. And he explained that there was the Shekhinah originally was in this world. There were seven sins, seven Averis that left this world, seven up to the seventh heaven. It was removed from this world, one heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, because of seven sins. And then seven Sadiqim, starting with Avram Avinu, they came and they started bringing the Shekhinah back down to this world, one level at a time, until Moshe Rabbeinu, he was the seventh one in this chain, and he brought the Shekhinah down into this world by Mount Terra. Then we messed it up again, and yeah, a lot of history happened. But now says the Rebbe that we're coming close to the Gula. It's the same thing. We have seven Sadiqim, the seven Rebbe's of Chabad, who are bringing the Shekhinah back down to this world permanently. They're going to bring the Gula. Seven generations. And our generation, says the Rebbe, that I'm starting now, this seventh generation, this is the final one. We are tasked with the job of bringing the redemption, bringing the Gula. It's our job, not because we're greater, but because we're the seventh, and we have the job, and we are going to bring the Gula. Which means that the Rebbe is saying that the generations, which clearly is going by the leader here, the Rebbe, the Rebbe is saying that it's, the seventh, it's not an amount of years. The Rebbe is the seventh generation because it's the seventh leader. Um, and he's saying that I'm going to be the one to take it to the end. It's my job and all of your jobs. We're doing this together. Our generation to bring the Gula. So how long is the generation? As long as the Rebbe is still the Nasi. And the Rebbe is saying that this is the last one. And this was something the Rebbe reiterated many times, that our seventh generation is the last generation of Golos and the first generation of Gula. So 
it's very difficult to get yourself out of this one. The Rebbe's going to see to the end, pretty much. If, if we trust the Rebbe, again, we're dealing here with things that are beyond our capacity to understand, necessarily. We know what means a generation, how it works. But if we're going to trust the Rebbe, this is what the Rebbe told us. The Rebbe also explains that Mashiach is really the same thing as the Nasi Adar. He's just uh, what we say in the Nasi Adar. We know every single person, every person has a soul. The soul is made up of five parts. It's called the Nefesh, Neruach, Neshama, Chaya, and the last one is called the Yechida. This is, so to speak, the essence of a Jew's soul, the deepest part of it, where the soul, where the essence resides. And Mashiach is the soul of the Jewish people. Now, the Nasi Adar is the Yechida. He's the essence of the soul of each generation. Like we're explaining, he's the master soul. He's the Yechida. He's the essential soul of each generation. And Mashiach, he's the Yechida. He's the master soul of all the generations. So it's the same thing, really. And therefore, explains the Rebbe, it makes sense to say that whoever is going to be the Nasi, the leader, at the time when we're going to earn the redemption, we're going to have the Gula, he's going to be Mashiach. So the Nasi Adar, the leader of the generation, is the Mashiach Shebedar. What does that mean? He's the one who, if that generation will be worthy, he will be the one who's going to be Mashiach. Every generation has the Nasi Adar, and that person is the potential Mashiach Shebedar. He's the one that, if that generation is worthy, he becomes Mashiach, the real, actual Mashiach. So this makes a lot of sense. It takes a lot of the mystery away. You know, Mashiach is not going to be some guy who nobody ever heard of coming down from heaven in sandals and, 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 and a flowing white beard. He's going to be, like it sounds like from the Rambam, he's going to be a person who's leading the entire Jewish people. He's going to be the leader of the Jewish people. <laughs> I heard it. I heard a, it's not a secret. I heard, a, yeah, I heard a very, I, I was learning a, a very, um Agula that we mentioned last time, and they were talking about Becheskas Mashiach. And they said something very like, it still doesn't click 100%, but what the point that they were making was essentially that the Mashiach Shabadar is also Becheskas Mashiach. Which I didn't really get. Not, yeah. But, I would disagree with that. Correct. But what, what the point that he was trying to make is, what's Becheskas Mashiach? Becheskas Mashiach is, they're starting the process. They're starting the, the, this, the Indian of... of Okay, first of all, the first two things he, he is, right? He's, he's Certainly. Uh, the question Teda. is on, on what, what does Yaakov call Yisrael mean? Yeah. So, so, so he explains over there that Yaakov call Yisrael is either practically you see him that he's actually doing it or in the, in, in the, in the way it is um, in the potential, right? In the Koyach, the whole, it's potential that the Nasi Hadar cares about every single Jew. So this I, I Indian of Yaakov, right, right. right I right. also, I, I don't completely get it, uh, uh, but but it's just an interesting point that he points out that this Indian of Becheskas Mashiach in a, in a halachic status could apply, you could apply it to the Definitely Mashiach, the, the, the Mashiach there are, in every generation. are a bit vague. Right. The Rambam. They're open to interpretation. Um, I do know that the Rebbe says in the earlier years that there is nobody who is Becheskas Mashiach. Mm-hmm. And that that's why Zionism, which professes that the founding of the state of Israel is the beginning of the redemption, cannot be. Because as the, the Rebbe said hundreds, perhaps thousands of times, we should have the Gula Mitzvah Shleim, we should have the full and complete redemption, Al Yedei Moshiach Tzikenu, through our righteous Moshiach. That it must be Moshiach who brings the Gula. So if something's happening, but it Moshiach didn't do it, then that's not the Gula. And right, the Rebbe says seems, being, it seems being also that, that nobody who's Bechazkas Moshiach, Right. It cannot be. Now, I've heard from Rabbi Shalom Khatanov, um, a well-respected Mashpia, that um, before the Iron Curtain fell, the Rebbe, so to speak, didn't have full control over a very large portion, millions of Jewish people. And he said that he remembers hearing from the Rebbe at one point that there, be, that there was as much people in in the USSR as there was in all uh, Yidin as there is in the rest of the world. It's a lot, a lot of Yidin there. Mm-hmm. And so long as he doesn't have control there, you know, Stalin does or whoever it is, you can't say that he's being Yochav Ko Yisrael. He's being, for whatever reason, prevented. It's not his fault. He's just not, he's not doing it in a, in a full way. 
Whereas after the anchor fell, the Rebbe literally has shluchim all over the entire world, actively being Yochav Kol Yisrael, actively doing it. They're, be, they're compelling every Jew to keep Torah Right. Now, like we said, being successful is already part of the, being a Mashiach Bavadai. That's part of completing the job. But to, right. be, to be somebody who's Bechaskas Mashiach, you need to be a guy. Chizkiah, he compelled all the Jews to keep Torah Mitzvahs. He did it by, mm-hmm. by the sword's edge. Everyone was from, everyone knew Torah. <laughs> you know? the, by the way, there were good Jewish kings. They did that. You know, there was a, it was a, it was a, a theocracy. Right, right. Um, but uh, right. This, so this, this is, is this is the Indian. This is the right. This is the concept of of Mashi- of a Nasi Hadar, and the Nasi Hadar is the Mashiach Shabidar because they have the same personality. Um, it's the same. It's the same thing. Characteristics. So, so this, right. So we can really we can really end the discussion right here. And as long as whoever a regular Lubavitcher who still thinks that the Rebbe is the leader of our generation, if the Rebbe is still the Nasi Hadar, if he's still the Rebbe. First, then he's still Mashiach. Right. So that answered that 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 explained the what do we mean by Rebbe? What do we mean by Mashiach? Right. It also if we're just leaving it, the question. I'm saying right, right. If we're leaving, if, if if this is what someone means when they ask the question, is the Rebbe Mashiach? This would answer the question. Yes, the Rebbe is Mashiach as long and, as as far even as if, even if he's still the Nasi, he's still Mashiach. Right. And, right. and this was even if the Rebbe would have said nothing else on the topic. We could have ourselves figured out that the Rebbe will be Mashiach and that he's still Mashiach even now. Because if this is the last generation and the Rebbe is the leader, he's the Nasi, and the Nasi of the Dadar is the Mashiach to Radar, then however, by Hokka by Kurok, he's going to be Mashiach. This is all very simple, very obvious, and very exciting. And naturally, armed with this information, you would. Um, like any normal person, want to tell everyone the exciting good news that Mashiach is here. We have somebody who's Mashiach, or will be Mashiach. We know <laughs> he's going to be the king. Oh, how does it end? What Mashiach actually does after he rebuilds the Mishmikdash, brings all the Jews, he goes on to become king of the entire world. He makes all the people in the world keep, follow Hashem. He reveals godliness into the world. And we get to do all the Torah mitzvahs again. We get to have literally see godliness. of all flesh will see that the word of Hashem is speaking. We're going to see how Hashem is creating the world. It's going to be the most amazing things. We're going to understand all of the negative things that happened throughout all of history, how they're all really good. The deepest secrets of the universe of Hashem, of God, it's all going to be revealed. And Mashiach is going to be the one teaching everyone. He's going to be so great. He's going to be teaching Meshur Rabbeinu Torah. He's going to be teaching Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov Torah. Mashiach is this amazing king. He's, he's, and he's the center of the whole Gula. It's all him. He's at the focal point. It's the Gula Mitzvah Vashlema. Ayyadei Moshiach Zakeinu, through our righteous Mashiach. So now we know, wow, the Labav Jirebbe is going to be Melech HaMashiach. That's crazy exciting news. Yet, for 40 years, the Rebbe kept it on the DL, on the down low. Because... How do we bring the gula? We bring the gula by spreading chesedus. Why? The Shemtev, we know he writes this, went to the Hechel of Shiach and Ganadin, Shemayim, and he asked him, when are you coming? And he answered, when your wellsprings of chesedus will spread forth. So the way we bring Mashiach explains the chesedus, explains the Rebbe, is to spread chesedus. That's the job of the hour. That's why you have shluchim all over the world. They're spreading Torah, they're spreading chesedus, spreading Giddishkeit. And in that way, we will be zeicher, we'll, we'll make this world the Dira B'tach we will earn the Geula. And although it's very exciting who Mashiach is going to be, that's not important right now. And it's ruining the mission and the job at hand. If if you bring it up, it could, if, if, if it came into um, contradiction, to the matter at hand, which is to spread Torah, Yiddishkeit, and Afat Samayanus, then it w- it's better not to talk about it. Because to a lot of people, they, they're they already not so, not necessarily do they even want to accept Chesedus at all, let alone the Rebbe, and that, that the Rebbe is Mashiach, that's way too many steps out of their game. So if if the job to earn the Geula is to spread Chesedus, focus on that, that's what's important. So you have this you know, you know this exciting information, 
but it's not really the time to talk about it yet. Okay. And there were those chassidim who, you know, they wrote to the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach and the Rebbe accepted it and that was their thing. As long as they weren't making a big deal out of it. They made a big deal out of it, then the Rebbe was very upset and the Rebbe reprimanded them that you, you're, you're ruining Lubavitch and you're messing everything up and uh, you have to fix the problem and make sure we stay on track. Then, like we mentioned, the Iron Curtain fell. This is in Tavshin, the Tavshin, no, no, Aleph. And things start changing. The Rebbe starts talking about Mashiach a lot. And the Rebbe starts hinting in these sikhs that he is himself Mashiach. And the, the, the Rebbe says a famous sikha that I did everything I can to bring Mashiach. And now it's up to you guys to bring Mashiach. And it's all about how can we bring Mashiach. And people start writing in signatures, accepting the Rebbe as Mashiach. Because they figured maybe that's what we need. We need that uh, the people should accept the, the Rebbe as, as the king. And what do you know? The Rebbe accepts these signatures. And he says, yes, bring me more. Thank you. Bring me more signatures accepting me as Mashiach. This is big. Till now, we was all the way opposite. Now we're getting a change. In the, and they even said, uh, by the Fabring and on Shabbos, they said, Yechi in front of the Rebbe. And the Rebbe smiled. This is, this is a big deal. This is a big change. Then people start saying that it's ruining the Afatza. So that was like, it's ruining Afatza. Okay. Don't do it. You know, you have to understand this was something the people started. So if the whole point is the people need to accept Mashiach as their king, if they're saying they don't want to do it, <laughs> it doesn't really work. And then the Sikhs start getting more and more things in the Sikhs talking about how the Rebbe is Mashiach. And a lot of hints we have the kid that keeps talking about Mashiach, his name is Menachem. And one of the famous things that ever says that uh, in, in the Seder, the order closest to us in our generations, the word Miyad is Zosh Tevis for Mashiach, whose name is Menachem, for Yesi Vitzchak, the Friedrich Rebbe, and Deiber. You froze. Yeah, here we go. The Rebbe is talking clearly that that, 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 that is Mashiach. But these are uh, still, you have uh, the Muslim. You have, and, 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 and you have plenty more. The Rebbe says that the base of Mikdash is coming down to 770. First stop. The Rebbe says that 770 is Gematria base, Paratsta Gematria base Mashiach, the house of Mashiach. That the Rebbe this, explains also that that Yivne Beis Mikdash Yivne Beis Mikdash Mikdash that Mashiach is not going to build a base Mikdash in. What does it mean? He's going to build it. Build a base Mikdash be Bim Kaimai. Well, obviously Bim Kaimai. Like where else is he going to build it? What's the Rambam saying? So there's an explanation Al Pinigla, but the Rambam is the Rebbe says it means he's going to build a mini base Mikdash in in um, his in place Hutzlaret, in his place in Galus, and that's 770. So. The Rebbe is saying all of these uh, c crazy things, but much more to the point. The Rebbe told us that we finished the job of Golos fully. This was Ne'er Tavshin Nun Beis. We totally finished. We're done with our Fatsamayanis. We were successful. We did it. And now we're ready for the Gula. We're ready for the Gula to happen. And two weeks later, the Rebbe says that we were successful and Mashiach is now his galos. So the wait is over. And the Rebbe spoke about it more fully, the famous Sikh of Chayi Sarat Tavshin and Beis. And there the Rebbe said, in very clear words, that Mashiach has now been appointed by Hashem. You know, this person, this potential person, like we said, who's the Nasi Adar in every generation who could be Mashiach. And when the time comes, Hashem reveals himself to him and sends him to be Mashiach. Which, as we explained before, it's not a secret. It's always just the Nasi Adar. Whoever the Nasi Adar of any generation is, that's the, he's the person who Hashem will tell him that he's Mashiach if the time comes. The Rebbe said, since we finished the job, the Nasi Adar is saying we finished the job. So Hashem came to him and told him that he's Mashiach. So now Mashiach was revealed. And who is this? Says the Rebbe, I'm talking about my father in law, the Nasi Adar. And as you know, this was key word for the Rebbe himself. So he explained the whole Nasi Adar business. He's talking about his father. He started referring to himself. He's the Friedrich Rebbe was the Nasi Adar of the sixth generation. Now we're in the seventh generation. He, he's the practical Nasi Adar. So the Rebbe says, he, the, my father-in-law, the Friedrich Rebbe, he is Mashiach. And he's been appointed by Hashem to take the Jewish people out of Golis. 
He has given he has been given the shlich as the job to take the Jewish people out of Golas. So even if you want to be skeptical, the skepticism is that maybe the Rebbe was indeed referring to his father-in-law and that the Friedrich Rebbe, who had passed away 42 years prior, is, was Mashiach. But there can be no doubt other than between them two. Either the Rebbe or his father-in-law is for sure Melech Mashiach. And this is not something that can be reversed or go back. The Rebbe is saying that we've earned the Geula. Hashem revealed himself to Mashiach, told him that he's Mashiach, sent him and gave him the job to take the Eden out of Golos. And now we have some technical difficulties that through Kabbalah and Mashiach Tzakenu, the Rebbe gave us all the job, how we can help Mashiach do his job. And that's, we have previous episodes to discuss exactly what that means. But it's very clear that the Rebbe is Mashiach. There's no toys about it. This is not something that is in doubt. Anyone who will tell you that this is a matter that uh, it's not clear, they're just ignorant. Um, or they're not sure that what the Rebbe says is the absolute truth. The premise of this entire episode is that uh, what the Rebbe says is the truth. Now, even without that, you just look, practically speaking, who's somebody who fits the criteria of Mashiach, and it's the Rebbe, obviously. But uh, here the Rebbe is telling us straight up that he's Mashiach. It's not a question. And then the Rebbe goes on to say how we have the pu'ulas of Melcha Mashiach, that Mashiach is doing things in the world, that Mashiach is fulfilling the prophecies that Mashiach is meant to do. That what's going on in between the, U in the UN and America is, is getting rid of their arms and turning uh, using money that was meant to be for nuclear weapons into money for agriculture. This is a fulfillment of the biblical prophecy that Mashiach will fulfill. So right, the point is, the, right. The point is, it, it's been set in motion. It's been set in motion that the 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 process has already begun. It's and we're in the middle of the process. We're Correct. we're we're past the stage of a potential Mashiach. We're talking here about the Rebbe assuring us that he's the actual Mashiach. And then comes an entire year of Chesedim singing, Long live our master, teach you and Rebbe, King Mashiach forever. And the Rebbe was vociferously encouraging it for over a year. And this really is all you need to know, that for over a year, the Rebbe encouraged the singing, Long live the Rebbe, King Mashiach. Forever. There can be no doubt that people wonder if the Rebbe thought he was Mashiach, if the Rebbe said, if he didn't say, this is all, there's no reason to have such speculation. You need not worry over this. It's very clear. It's very obvious. The Rebbe is Melech HaMashiach. If we're chassidim of the Rebbe, and what the Rebbe says is the reality, then the Rebbe is Melech HaMashiach. What changed? What changed is that before the Rebbe was not yet Bechazkas Mashiach, L'chayra, he was always going to be Mashiach, he was always the Nasi Adar, but he perhaps didn't get fit the criteria. Now, again, this is beyond me, so whether it be, you know, maybe he did and the chat's different. So no, very, very simply, God, God, I'm saying, it would seem that something changed. Right. What changed was Hashem revealed himself to him. That that's yeah, what no, changed. But even in, in, in the technical detail that before he was not technically Bechaskas Mashiach. Right. And now the, the point is that at, at, at some point he became officially Bechaskas Mashiach. And this the Rebbe says clearly that he was already Bechaskas Mashiach. The Rebbe says he hears and that Laachir is a much and end of us is Bechaskas Mashiach. He hears and may be Hashem as well that after we already have someone who has Bechaskas Mashiach, Zolashenglach Vere Mashiach Bavada. He should very soon become. Mashiach Bavadai. And this is why the Rebbe says, we're in your Mesa Mashiach, because there's already somebody who's Mashiach. He didn't get taken out of Golis, but we're in your Mesa Mashiach. So he's, he's a person, yeah. There's nothing what to talk about. And uh, it's all very clear. So my question for you is like this. I guess we'll wrap up with this, with this question. Um, I believe we've... Um, I don't know if we've mentioned it or we've um, addressed it, but I would like to ask you, so this is all beautiful, but what, um, I guess the question is, what are we supposed to be doing? What's the, what's the, <sighs> there are people like us that have been saying Yechi, there are people like us that have been uh, addressing the Rebbe as Melech HaMashiach and all these things. So the question is, what more? What else do we need to do um, 
isn't it enough that there are people like the Rebbe says in Chav Chasnis in the famous Sicha that uh, if there will be one, two, or three, or ten people, all the it it seems that it, do, it doesn't need to be such a big number. The question is what? So what else do we need to do? What's the so what's first the hold of all, up? Like the Rebbe told us, and this is really what changed from between the two time periods, that before the job was spreading entirely in Chassidus, and that was going to bring we should merit the Gula, and that's been completed, and therefore Hashem owes us the Gula. And according to what the, the Eberster tells us in his title, like the Rebbe said many times, we finished all of the Avodah of Galus, and the Eberster must bring us the Gula, and there's no excuses. That's first of all. So you're correct. Makes no sense. We've earned the Gula. The Rebbe told us we have the Eidos, the testimony of the Nasi Adar, that the Eberster is supposed to give us the Gula. End of the story. That said, and this is why things changed, because we've already reached a time period now it's time to start talking about the Rebbe is Mashiach. Now, it, now, it's, now, now this matters. Because now the job isn't to make the world ready to earn the Gula. We did that already. Now it's to actually prepare the world for Mashiach. The great Mashiach. For whatever reason, this is what's necessary. This is the job. We have to, everyone has to realize that Mashiach is here. And all of our activities need to be focused on greeting him. Centered around him. And seemingly, um, and this was something that specifically was the job of the Rebbe Shluchim. And that's largely been ignored because largely people are unwilling to even admit that it matters or that it's true that the Rebbe is Mashiach. So it's obviously impossible to have the whole Chabad focused on greeting him as Mashiach if they're refusing to admit that simple reality as existing or even being important. And uh, I think it's very simple. When we, it should be one mitzvah that the Rebbe says, we'll tip the scale, we'll have the gula. So, you know, to tip the scale of this last technical avoid also. But, and, and Hashem anyways, they'll just, the whole thing makes no sense because he has to bring the gula. But if we're following the Rebbe's instructions, the Rebbe's instructions were very clear. We all have to be, the entire Chabad movement needs to be focused on greeting Mashiach. And as of yet, um, it's pretending like the whole thing never happened. So um, that's the job. We need to be greeting Mashiach. Thank you. Hopefully okay. that answered most of the questions. If anybody else has any questions, obviously ask. Um, don't be afraid to ask. Look into it. Um, and yeah, we should have we should have the the complete um, revelation of Mashiach in the way that building the base of Mikdash and being Mekabetz Nitzchei Yisrael into Eretz Yisrael very very soon. We want Mashiach now. Amen.